Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to the episode of Pat Taste Performance. Today we are working on the element. Okay? Um, as you guys know, my ultimate goal is to make this more small engine friendly and still retain its quirky look that we can still use it to go on road trips. So I am in the per never ending pursuit of happiness of increasing my storage capacity. And the one way we are going to do that is we are going to be installing a Magnus Motorsports. I don't know if you guys think. What do you think? What do you think? A hitch. Right? If you guys know, if you guys follow my channel, right? I use um I use the hitch carrier, right? I mostly use that for non-running equipment because to try and get a non-running snowblower or even generators in general, oh my god, extremely exhausting and um, nearly impossible. So that hitch carrier, it's lower to the ground. Right? So the angle isn't as aggressive. But also, it's just a couple of steps. And the steps are, there's gaps in between, so I can kind of pivot off of that. And like I said, very, very helpful. So I got this off of eBay. You guys know I love eBay. And eBay had the 10% eBay box. I told you I went shopping. I just did a lot of shopping. And my shopping list was this hitch. They make two different sizes. I went with, I think this is the class here, yeah, the class three. So I don't need the adapter that I normally have on the Saturn. So let's see the open box. Package really, really nice in black. Hardware and instructions. So just by looking at this, there's like springs and stuff and U bolts. I don't know what the heck that's for. Um, Let's get this bad boy undone. I'm gonna have to actually read the instructions on this. Ah, you know what? I have to admit, the package are really nice. It's just a hitch. It's gonna get beat up anyway in the element. You guys are questioning yourself, right? I have no desire to get a trailer as of right now. Or else I would have done that oh. many, many moons ago. And I probably would have done it when I had the Saturn, because that would have been freaking hysterical. Going down the road in the Saturn station wagon with a trailer full of equipment. I probably would have been famous at some point. People think I'd probably do my landscaping out of that. But, you know, all you guys got to start somewhere. I'm not knocking you. Don't take it that way. You have to add some weight. You guys know the Honda Element? Fuel mileage isn't the greatest. So, we're going to add to that greatness. All right, so see this here? That's where your breakaway chains go to. That's on that piece. Yeah, these are the brackets. Oh, these are the brackets. 
so that makes it so much easier. Thank God. I think, right? I hope they don't. Yeah, you know what? I don't want to speak out loud. I'm thinking maybe I'll attach the brackets first, and then I'll do the hitch, so it's not as heavy. I did take a quick peek underneath. going to have to do some cutting, which is fine. So this is something you, could, you can do in your driveway, right? But you're going to need something to cut the frame. Plastic. That's a nice, nice hunk of metal. Is this on backwards? Usually the breakaway chain is on top. See the Magnus. What up? Got there. And then you see here these brackets bolt up on the side. Really nice, uh, you can definitely tell, nice and thick. Nice and black like the rest of the, the element. Alright, so after just going over the directions, we are going to have to assemble this hitch, which it is what it is. Didn't really want to do that, but we must. get this over here. Alright, so this is your view. This bracket up, these hooks on the bottom are for your tote breakaway chains. Those are on the bottom. So we'll line up this side here. I already put these bolts on with any C's. It's a 15 16 I mean I'm sorry. Wow. 16 millimeter head, 15 millimeter nut. I did put ADCs on these, not necessary, because if I ever get rid of my car, the element, the hitch is going with it, because this installation is going to be a little tricky, per se, and you're going to find out why. I thought I had to cut the frame, but it's saying drilling. Now, if you guys know, I do have a really nice set of drill bits from Drill Hog. So we'll see if I get to get away with using those. Or if we really have to cut the frame. Now, if I have to cut the frame, you still can do this at home if you have an air compressor. Or instead of using my air power tool, we can use electric. make them nice and tight because you don't want stuff flying off. We know I've already had an experience of stuff flying off. When you're doing these, you notice that I'm putting the bolt head facing out and the nut is going on the inside. And that is strictly because the instructions are telling you to do that. I'm assuming they don't want stuff hanging out the sides. Have it all tucked in the way. Okay. 
same thing. have to get the mounting hardware in there. So let's get underneath this thing. Okay, so we are underneath the element. And I've actually really never got a good look underneath my element. So I'm just going to get a little lost right now, if you don't mind me. Like I said, I just did quick peeks. That zip tied there for what? It's a straw strap bar. These are axles. Like I said, I'm just getting lost. I'm actually going to skip over this. Oh, and our exhaust hanger. Ah, look at that. My muffler is missing. Which is fine. That's okay. I like that clean look. Ah. Anyhow. These holes here have to be enlarged, okay, because we need to insert, there's a special tool that you slide in, and it's going to hold the carriage bolts and, and nuts in, so we'll get that squared away, and of course we have to do it to both sides as well. Man, that's probably the most hardest part of this install. Right, so here's just a close-up view of what it's supposed to look like, right? You have your spacer with the carriage bolt. That's going to go up front. Whoops. It's going to go inside. This is supposed to go inside the frame. Then we're going to put a washer underneath. Unbolt it. And washer again. This is another tricky part too as well. This is going to go on the back and it's going to be facing this way. We're going to have to try and feed this in. And that's what I'm talking about. Once you do this hitch, that, it's like not worth it to take it back off. So what I need to do is I need to pull these off, right? Because I need to open up the openings on the frame large enough. Oops, I'm gonna edit this out to accommodate these holes. Because if you guys see here. Right? This is what it's supposed to go through. See that? This will not fit. Right? Can't slide that in. And this will not fit at all either. So what you could do, right, is cut this out if you want to cut. Or take a drill bit and enlarge in the hole. Now if you don't have the big size drill bits like I do, what you could do is drill a hole next to that hole, right, and just start to open it up. But I'm going to take my big drill bits, I have drill hog, right, look at these suckers. Ugh. Why do you need drill bits this big? For situations just like this. So what I'm doing is I don't want to go extreme. Right? That's I don't want to go extreme the first time you drill. You just want to open it up little by little. So you're not stressing stuff out. I'm just trying to see with the lighting. Let's get a good view of this. There we go. Alright, just a little bit. We're going to slowly open these up. Alright, so we are going to drill. Actually, let me get my 3 Alright, so I got my drill. I'm just going to open this hole up. It's 
on an angle, so that's kind of crappy. You're really supposed to be drilling as straight as possible. You can see the drill slowly working its way in. seems like the best way is to cut, but depends if you guys don't have access to stuff like that. There we go, I'm starting to hollow it out. So when I go to the next size, it won't be as difficult. So unfortunately, we're going to have to do the same thing here. Now remember, we're exposing bare metal, so when we're done, we're going to have to paint this. Please do that. Heading there. So let's see if we made this long enough. Okay, we actually did. Okay, well we can get that inside here. Lines up, perfect. So now the only thing we have to do, right, what size drill bit is this? In case you just want to go big or go home.
All right, so just so you know, that was a 7 inch drill bit that I used to open up the holes initially to get the back ones to work. Now we're still in the pursuit of elongating this hole, right? To get that to work. going to be a little difficult. Now let's check, right? That's what this is for. Nope. Nope. Still got some more to go. As you guys see, I'm just moving the drill bit around. Let's see if we can get my next one up. Oh boy. After that, I'm out of drill bits. Look at this. This is one inch. Oh my god, we already opened it up for one inch. So we're really going to have to work this thing. Vibration. That's annoying. Fits the battery. Or 
was just the vibration, man, because this thing is shaking a lot. Yeah, it's just the vibration. enough. Oops. Can you guys see that? We really have to work that hole open. Alright, so what we do to one side, I gotta do the other. Alright, so as you guys can see, I painted, right? All you gotta do is protect everything. Next, it's probably gonna be yeah, probably the second hardest part, right? You have to get this inside here. So what you need to do, see this here? We're going to fish it through this hole. Get it out of here, okay? Then we're going to feed it to this. And then twist our carriage bolt in here. Which is a really, really poor fitting because this is small. God. Well, that sucks. Yeah, but how do we open this up? All right, you gotta just really give this a couple of good twists. You gotta force it in there. Now I'm being a little overzealous, I have two threads on there, okay? So now we're just going to stick this in. Okay. And then we're gonna use that bolt. And we're gonna use that to lock itself in. See that? nice and tight. It's not going anywhere. Not as bad as I thought. So what we did to one side, I'm going to do to the other. Alright. Just a quick little tip here. Okay. Jack stand to support the other side. And I got the spacer in between. get that. I had the spacer in between and I didn't put the washer underneath. That's just temporary. I'm going to get that side up and I'm going to work my way back. And I have to stick this U-bolt in here first because that goes right through those, those holes here. Alright? Alright, they said this hitch was bolt on. Absolutely not. I'm shaving and shaving and shaving at this right here to get this hitch to fit in. Junk, junk, junk. Alright guys, we're done. You know what, this didn't turn into a how-to video, I had to stop. Because this is a complete piece of junk. Do not buy this. Please, please. Do not pour fitment. If you guys see here, I had to cut that hoop. Right, that hoop is supposed to be there. But since I'm only doing snow blowers, I mean I'm not going to be towing anything crazy. You know, I'll be fine. I think the, probably the heaviest thing a machine weighs is 300 pounds. You know, what a just junk, 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 poor fitting. Um, I just did some research. This is a copycat of a Kurt hitch. Spend the extra money, get the Kurt hitch. Do not make the same mistake as me. All right, guys, that's it. I guess, you know what, I mean, I, I can't even say my usually sm I'm just aggravated. I guess, you know what, if you guys found this video helpful, informative, smash the like button, smash that subscribe button, and guess what? I'll see you guys on the next episode of Pat Taste Performance. And what, what is the company again, Magnus? Oh my god, you know, I'm just so freaking aggravated. Yeah, Magnus, junk, do not buy, please.
Later. Oh, <laughs>